The story starts while Ben and Gwen look around for anything interesting. Max listens to the history of the Indian dream catcher. Ben appears to be bored, but a little girl's local dance piques his interest. Gwen is perplexed by Ben's hidden interest in the culture's indigenous traditions. Wes introduces Max to Kai Green, his granddaughter. Max seemed to recall her when she was a toddler. Ben straightens his hair in the hopes of attracting Kai's notice. Gwen wonders if Kai was doing a rain dance when the clouds darken the skies. They flee the storm, but Ben appears to be too preoccupied with Kai. A lightning bolt strikes the earth beside Ben, and a hideous extraterrestrial emerges in front of him. The alien flees, and the group realizes they are in danger. Wes declares a flash flood, and they flee to higher ground. Unfortunately, Kai is caught in the flood's powerful push and is carried along with it. Ben tries to turn into Ripjaws, but the Omnitrix activation procedure fails. Ben, on the other hand, chooses to go as himself and leaps on top of a barrel. He instructs Kai to take his hand in his. They suddenly discover a wall that would crush them if they continue down the stream, so they jump up to grab something. Kai expresses gratitude and asks why he is still holding her hand. He relaxes and blushes. The alien snatches off the satellite receiver from the roof. Wes believes the monster was a Navajo werewolf called a Yenaldushi. Wes prepares to sedate the werewolf. Unfortunately, Kai and Gwen are unable to accompany them because Wes states that only braves are permitted to leave. Traditions have not altered despite the passage of time. Ben seemed to be sad about Kai's inability to accompany them, suggesting he could cheer her up. Gwen believes Ben has a crush on her. Ben first denies it, but he can't keep it from her. Outside, Wes attempts to figure out how to find the werewolf, and they follow the trail to where it could be. They ascend the mountain and come across the werewolf foraging through metal. Wes prepares his tranquilizer and fires, only for the werewolf to avoid it owing to its improved hearing. When the werewolf attacks them, they fall off the cliff. Ben uses the Omnitrix and attempts to turn into Stinkfly, but instead becomes Wild Vine. Wes is taken aback by the sight. Wild Vine grabs a boulder at the top of the cliff and stretches his arms in the other direction to save Wes and Max. Max must explain himself to Wes once Ben reveals himself to be morphing. Wild Vine returns to the top, attempting to seize the werewolf. Wild Vine drags it into the earth when it bites him. As they return to the surface, Wild Vine transforms back into Ben, and the werewolf approaches him and scratches the Omnitrix. Ben doesn't understand why the Omnitrix begins to respond and become yellow. After the werewolf flees, Wes and Max return up to check on Ben and then return home. Kai wonders why people are leaving the rust bucket. Wes reveals that they are afraid of the werewolf's return and that its power will be greater than ever with the full moon. She walks over to Ben, who tells her how he uses the Omnitrix alien's talents for good. He rubs himself as he speaks to her, and the itch doesn't seem to go away. Gwen mocks him and refers to him as a monkey. When Ben removes his shoe, he turns bluish, claws appear, he grows more hair, and his ears become pointier. We says that because Ben was bitten by a Yeneldushi, he will turn into one, and the only way to reverse this is to stop the Yeneldushi that bit him. Ben believes that a silver bullet would be effective. Wes claims that it only occurs in films. He goes on to add that the only way to halt it is to obtain the spiritual silver necklace and the fluids of the Herbol del Matrimonio Cactus, which he places on the Yeneldushi's heart. If they don't do it soon, Ben will remain a Yeneldushi for the rest of his life. Ben, Gwen, and Kai are inside the rust bucket, and Ben makes a dish of eggs with milk. He dives right into the bowl making a mess on Kai. Gwen learns where to get their gold del matrimonio cactus, and Ben goes to the fridge to get more food. Ben's appearance abruptly changes, his body becoming more muscular, and his head becoming more wolf-like. Ben claims to still be Ben, but he goes out to get something else to eat. Wes learns that the werewolf has struck again, this time robbing a radio station. Wes deduces that the werewolf is acting in this manner because it feels technology is destroying its holy territory. Ben screams in an attempt to locate the werewolf. It responds, and Wes, Ben, and Max move in the direction of the howl. Wes discovers a trace on the floor and claims to sense the presence of the werewolf nearby. Its eyes shine an awful greenish color behind them, and it exposes itself to be Ben referring to himself as Ben Wolf. Meanwhile, Kai and Gwen go in search of the cactus. Gwen declares that she is ready to stop looking, but then, in an ironic twist, she sits on it. Wes uses a flare to contact Kai, because neither of them has reception. When Wes, Max, and Ben Wolf notice the werewolf directly above them, the werewolf leaps down and attacks Ben Wolf. Max attacks the werewolf with a rock to distract it while Ben Wolf fights the werewolf. Ben Wolf attempts to morph into XLR8, but the Omnitrix is missing from his wrist. 
Ben Wolf responds by attacking to keep it away from Max, while Kai and Gwen rise in sync with the cacti. Wes squeezes the juice from the cactus and walks up to the werewolf to lay it on its chest. The werewolf escapes their grasp barely in time before Wes touches it. While Ben Wolf restrains it, Gwen decides to give it a shot. She tries on the silver pendant, but has no luck. The werewolf flees. Wes is perplexed as to why the necklace did not stop the werewolf. When Ben Wolf begins to morph once more, and to his amazement, an omnitrix symbol appears around his waist, and suddenly it hits them. They're not dealing with a Yeneldushi, they're dealing with an alien werewolf. Ben Wolf recalls that when the werewolf scratched the omnitrix, it lit yellow and entered scan mode. It appears that the omnitrix takes DNA from every alien that comes into contact with it. Max is taken aback by the discovery of an alien werewolf, noting that just when he thought the summer couldn't get any crazier, Ben Wolf is upset since he met a lot of aliens and may have converted into their species if they touch the Omnitrix, especially Vilgax. For some reason, the ground begins to quake. The gang discovers and enters a cave. There is a slight odor of sulfur in the air, indicating that they are within a volcano. Wes claims that the volcano is inactive. Then the walls shatter and lava pours forth. The werewolf has reawakened the volcano in some way. As the gang flees the lava, they come upon a more perplexing situation. A damaged road and a pool of lava below. Ben Wolf was able to jump across and carry passengers, so he brought the girls to the opposite side of the cliff. Ben Wolf, on the other hand, opens his jaw completely and unleashes his sonic scream to catapult Max and Wes to safety. Ben Wolf plunges into the lava as the Omnitrix runs out of time and transforms back into Ben just as Wes and Max escape. Max steps in to help. Ben has returned to himself and has Ben Wolf as an Omnitrix alien. The gang is curious as to what the werewolf's genuine objectives are. The werewolf discovers them and assaults them as they struggle to find a way out of the cave. The lava had burst through and would destroy the community if not stopped. Ben changes into Cannonbolt. The lava flow cascades down the mountain while the battle rages. Cannonbolt says he'll lock it up and the rest should flee. A cave-in happens, separating Cannonbolt and the werewolf from the rest of the gang. As the cave roof collapses, the group flees through the cave exit. They believe Cannonbolt has vanished when he reappears, unhurt. The lava appears to have been halted, and the werewolf looks to have been defeated. Wes is relieved that some of the villagers are returning. Even though they never located the werewolf's stolen equipment, they believe the threat is ended. Ben is delighted to have a new alien and intends to add others. Ben chats to Kai again, while Wes helps Max prepare to depart. But it appears that she already knew what he was up to. Unfortunately, she claims he is not her type. Kai only liked Ben Wolf because she wanted to train and control him, which upsets Ben. This enrages Gwen, who scolds Kai and sends him on his way. Gwen advises Ben that he can obtain a lot of other females if he says two words that would capture their attention. Ben replies right away and gripes to Gwen about not notifying him. Deep within the cave, a strange machine constructed from stolen gearbox equipment suddenly comes to life and this story ends here.